All right, we're here now with people from the arts of the Marine Corps, the Marine Corps Combat Art Collection, or I guess it's the Marine Corps Art Collection. Uh, and so we have some introductions. Hi, I'm Joan Thomas. I'm the art curator for the National Museum of the Marine Corps. Hello, my name is Alexis Reger, and I'm the registrar here at the National Museum of the Marine Corps. And so what do, what do we got to show, uh, ladies, here today? Alexis and I are going to be talking to you about the process that we go through in order for an artwork to come into the collection. Alexis will be discussing all the important roles that the registrar plays to legally access the work and so have legal title for the Marine Corps. And I'll be talking about what happens once it comes in. So I'll turn it over to Thank Alexis. You, Joan. As Joan mentioned, the registrar's main jobs are to legally manage all of the incoming donations and transfers from Marine Corps units. So I deal with um, donations from private citizens, transfers from any unit of historic objects and artwork, um, and then I manage the entire collection of over 65,000 objects and art in our collection here. Um, <laughs> on top of that, we also handle the loan program. We have over 200 outgoing loans um, to different Marine Corps units and private museums throughout the country and actually throughout the world. Um, so my office handles the management of those items as well that are not currently in the physical collection here, but they are out on display elsewhere. Once it's gone through the process of actually getting here, and we have done a lot of vetting before, it's my job to evaluate each work based upon our museum's collections rationale as to how it fits within the collection and how it helps us tell the Marine Corps story. Uh, that's why I tend to ask a lot of questions whenever someone is bringing something into the collection or proposing for donation. We need as much information as we can get because we're not going to be here. And so for future generations, they're going to want to know, did you know who is depicted? What unit is it? Do we know what kind of equipment is it? Um, all of those kinds of bits of information play into the determination on how it fits within the collection. So we have a number of categories that works fall into. So it can be um, combat art, which is more direct with actual combat situations. We have Marine Corps art, which is general subject matter. We collect portrait, sculpture, the whole gamut of fine art. But in addition to fine art, we also collect cartoons and prisoner of war art and propaganda art from both sides. So we can tell a complete story. But of importance to me when I'm looking at something for the collection is, can I exhibit it? Um, how is it pushing the story forward? Does it fill a gap in the collection? All of that comes into play when I write up a report because it's not just me because I like it and I think it fits within the collection's rationale. I have to convince five other people that they should vote for this to come into the collection. Um, and so all of those storylines, was there, did you as an artist, was there a particular artistic reason why you chose one subject over the other? Is there a statement that you're wanting to say about the particular piece? Anything that you feel is important to inform anyone looking at the, in, looking at the work of art, for the future or as the curator working on an exhibit, all of that comes into play when we're starting to look at the evaluation, how we're going to use this in future exhibitions or in publications that will tell people about the Marine Corps using art um, to further that story. And so it becomes really, really key for us to have those that information on name, unit, rank, um, any exercise, what exercise is it? Um, if you're in, in Norway and it's Trident Juncture, we need to know that because we will be looking in some cases specifically for art that's depicting NATO operations and what kind of exercises have we engaged in with our NATO partners. And so all of that comes into play. Uh, right now, a lot of what we're doing is we're getting we're looking at specific units. We're getting lots of questions about that. So as I'm doing a search, I find that when I look in the Pacific, because of the censorship going on in World War II, all I will have is South Pacific 
on the particular painting and then it, hopefully it has a date and I can make some kind of determinations. But now since we don't have those kinds of constraints, it becomes much more important to have that information with the work of art. And so it really does help us. Another issue that we had never really thought we would have is been sketchbooks. While we love sketchbooks and we do collect sketchbooks, what's important for us is once you turn the sketchbook in, we no longer have the ability to take any of the sketches out because we're destroying the integrity of the sketchbook. So don't be surprised if we ask you before you turn in um, your drawings and sketches from a particular exercise or deployment that anything is, that's finished, if it could please be removed from the book before it's donated to us because that allows us to have a lot more flexibility in how we're able to exhibit and use it in the future. So um, I just uh, wanted to make that little, little note. That doesn't mean we don't accept sketchbooks. We think it's a very important uh, part of how the artist uh, does their work. But we also sometimes would like to exhibit some of the amazing work that's in the sketchbooks. And we just can't if, if, it's, if it's in the book. One, one other important aspect, um, other than how important it is for the artist to bring the subjects to light with Joan in the research she was required, um, another important thing that I'm looking at from the registrar standpoint is copyright and the value of the art. So those are also two important questions that Joan and I will ask any artist that's donating um, art to our collection here. Those are two very critical things that we add to our files, our reports. Um, if art is valued above a certain standard, our director can't sign for it as a donation. And so I need to start a process called a gift acceptance package that goes up our chain of command to get accepted into the Marine Corps University. Um, and so again, I will be asking artists for valuing their, their artwork as best they can um, in the process of donating to the collection. Once Joan, as Joan mentioned, once she has presented and those six people have voted on the art to be added to the collection, the kind of the final process for uh, the legal standpoint is to send out a formal deed of gift. And so you'll, the artist will receive a formal deed of gift from myself, the registrar, um, to sign off on the, the art, and then it will be physically a part of the museum's collection. I'd like to welcome everyone to the Marine Corps Art Collection. Uh, it's located just south north of the museum. And so many of you are familiar with some of the tours we've had in the past when we've been able to be on site, but we just wanted to give you a brief overlook of kind of how we store our work and how we um, manage the collection. So once it's gone through the process of, of being, um, being donated, the formal deeds of gift have come through, it then now becomes part of the permanent collection. If it's framed, we store it on screens or in uh, a compactor shelving unit. This is where information becomes really important. This large painting here is by Colonel John W. Tomlinson, who is probably one of the most significant people within Marine Corps combat art I can think of, next to Ray Henry, who, who really founded the collection in, during Vietnam. We know, based on records, that this is the only large oil painting that Colonel Tomlinson ever did that we know of. Um, and so he has a smaller version called Elsie's Little Marine, and then you have this larger version. Mostly when you see Colonel Tomlinson's work, they tend to be very quick um, pen and ink drawings or watercolor sketches that he did on site or as little gifts to friends, um, you know, showing when he was in um, stationed in China or, or down in, the, in South America. Where those stories become particularly interesting is is when we start looking at some of the newer work. And the newer work, we can say, you know, what unit this is, what training exercise it was, um, showing joint um, Marine Corps, Navy um, exercises together, aviation, um, assault, vehicle training. And in this particular work um, that shows Marines on patrol, Without the information from the artist, 
we wouldn't be able to put this into context. This happens to be the last frame on a camera of a young Marine who was killed. And when his family received his, his effects, this was the last frame on his camera. Uh, an artist who um, is from Georgia asked permission to create this particular painting. Uh, once he did, they were then who should be the home for the work. They contacted us. The, the painting stands on its own, but knowing the backstory gives it a poignancy that uh, that is just so important when you're working with work of this kind. And I think that's one of the touchstones when you have a collection like this. It's about the people and it's about their experiences and what this says about the Marine Corps and what the Marine Corps says is important about their Marines. And, and so all of that plays into the overall um, thought processes when you're looking at evaluating a work for the collection, but also how you're gonna further the story of the Marine Corps. We also have historic paintings um, or moments in Marine Corps history. This is a prime example of work by Tom Lovell before he became well known. Um, he joined the Marine Corps hoping to be a combat artist in World War II. They found out, the Marines found out, he was an excellent illustrator, and the next thing he knew, he was a leatherneck in Marine Corps Gazette, pumping out covers and illustrations um, all through the war. This particular painting, Iwo Jima, on, this particular work of the Marines on flag raising on Iwo Jima was done as part of a series for the Marine Corps Gazette as for their covers. And so part of Lovell's task was to create moments of important history to the Marine Corps. So the Marine Corps knew how important this particular subject was going to be and had him paint this particular painting shortly after the flag raising. He, in addition to this, he did a number of other paintings that, that show Marine Corps history from the founding of the Corps up through World War II. So these particular works just give you a slight feel for the broader collection. It's over um, 10,000 works, and it ranges everything from very large, oversized paintings to very small, intimate, on-the-spot sketches. Um, and really, the bulk of our collection are those on-the-spot sketches. And for me, those are the touchstones of the collection because they are very intimate, they are very immediate, and they really show you what's happening at that particular moment in time. And we just want to thank you all for your time. And if you ever have any questions, our staff is here and we'll do the best we can. All right, speaking of questions, we're going to go into live Q&A. Thank you, ladies, very much.
All right. Question and answers. Does anybody have any questions for Joan and Alexis? Well, this isn't a question, and I've brought it up before, but um, it it's actually a lot more work than I thought it was going to be to uh, track down all the information about uh, uh, the scene or the people that you are uh, documenting in, in these paintings. And uh, I, I'm just throwing that out there. I didn't realize it until uh, the second deployment, uh, the second assignment, and I was uh, really struggling. And then by the third time, I knew what I was supposed to do. And it took a lot of time gathering all the information. Oh, yeah. John? Yes, ma'am. Oh, we, I, <laughs> please, I'm so sorry. You're so no. patient. You're so patient with us. <laughs> no, I just want to say how grateful I am for all of the information that you do provide. Um, it makes my job so much easier when I'm writing those reports I'm and sure. when I'm really looking at the work. And I know that when I leave, whoever yeah. follows me will be grateful for all of what the context that you've provided for your work. And so I can't tell everyone how appreciative we are for all of the information you guys provide and also for how accessible you are when we have questions because I know sometimes it seems like we're asking the same thing over and over again and to be honest with you on some days I may be asking the same thing over and over again because the mind goes a little bit after a while but I just can't tell you all how appreciative we are for everything that you're doing for the collection. Well the um one of the examples you had on that the wall uh, that you just showed, you had two of my paintings, and uh, one of them I know is Lieutenant Ott or Lieutenant Orr, <laughs> and 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 that's basically all I knew. He was just uh, relaxing. Mm -hmm. They were up at the gunnery range, and and at that point I I thought, oh, they know where I am. They sent me down here, so they have all the information about these people that they need. Well, it was later that I discovered. Uh, but also the young man uh, who is uh, working on a 50 caliber machine gun, there were 50 of those guys. And I had no idea, uh, you know, which photograph or if any of the photographs I was going to work from would be a, a appropriate for a painting. But that one turned out really nicely. No, so. Well, we really appreciate it. And um... And like I said, we know you can't get everybody, but for our perspective, just having the training exercise um, and knowing, you know, the dates, um, if there's anything else you want to add to the information, just so that future curators will, will know. When I put an exhibit together, I try to use as much information from the artist mm -hmm. as possible. And if the artist has said something about the work, then I want that to speak for itself and not how I may be interpreting it totally different than what the artist's right. vision was. And so I think that's particularly important for going forward and also just letting you know my thought processes because sure, sure. I just think the artist's intent is the most important part of, of when I'm trying to assemble, assemble an exhibition or evaluating a work of art. If that kind of gives you a little bit of insight into kind of how I kind of go through my process. Yeah. One thing I will say, um, most of you are being are very good. I know that Richard and, and um, Victor and John, you guys do keep good notes and stuff. I would recommend if you don't already do it, take a journal with you. I, I tend to journal uh, all the activities and some that even when I'm back in the States or wherever at the home studio, um, I'll keep a record of things that may be significant. Um, Sometimes even the, the, the type of paint I'm using, if, if I'm using a color that's I'm not normally using or a brand, sometimes I'll even put that on there. Or if I've done a homemade varnish or a homemade uh, paint medium, I'll, I'll put that because years from now, uh, as Joan said, we're not going to be here. So um, they might want to have something like that. And it, feel, it seems a little egotistical. Oh, it's so, I better put down everything I was doing. But uh, eventually, uh, if, if they're going to take care of your work forever. So um, they're going to want to know stuff about that too. And and luckily we're not public affairs in the sense that we don't have to make sure we get every person's name and where they're from and all that stuff. But as long as we're getting the who, the what, the where and the when, um, that's all, that's a good thing. 
Oh, and I, another thing um, I just thought of, um, if you're using something really unique on your canvas, say you're, I don't know, where you're using a different kind of uh, material, that's good for us to know because God forbid something should happen and we have to send something out to a conservator. It really helps them if we can explain to them, um, oh, well, this is a canvas, but it's been, this has been, it's been treated with this or it's been done with this or, or whatever, because that helps inform for the conservator mm -hmm. so they don't actually accidentally do something perhaps they shouldn't do. Um, it, it rarely happens. It's normally they're wanting to know if someone has conserved it in the past. And that's usually for our much older works who've been through a lot more back in the day. But if you are using a unique material, that is a good thing just to let us know because we will put that as part of the record. And so we'll, we'll know it if in the future, if we need to, if there's a special thing we need to do in terms of storage or maintaining it or whatever that helps us um, better care for the work. One of the many things that I really uh, like about Richard Johnson's drawings is um, it, it's uh, he, he kind of solves this because his whole process, he sees a scene, he sits down, he starts drawing and he may be there an hour, two hours or more. I, ha I have no idea, but he slows the whole process down. Mm -hmm. And right there, you have plenty of opportunity to say, what's your name? What, what weapon is this? And, and uh, so his drawings, the ones I've seen, they, they all have, this is the guy's name, his rank, and uh, you know, so the, just slowing it down. But I, I run through everywhere with a, a, a camera taking photographs of everything and I'll go back and I'll, I, uh, what I started doing at Miramar, my last assignment was I started taking photographs. And I knew that, that somewhere of the photographs that I took of this scene, that's going to be a photograph. So that's going to be a painting. So I would go back and ask the guy, you know, uh, what's your name? And I would do uh, the sketch there. So the sketches really, for me, uh, amounted to being, you know, gathering the information. This okay. is, you know, this is a drawing of that guy. And uh, the drawing itself is not that, inf that important, but the information surrounding mm -hmm. it is. Right. I'm learning slowly, Joan. <laughs> Well, we're, we're very fortunate. We just um, were looking at some, we're framing some of your work yesterday, um, selecting frames. And um, it's just such a wonderful experience working with, with, the, with the artwork you've created. So we oh, had a... That everybody's was, created. It's I, true. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a joy. It's some amazing stuff. Yeah. It's a joy. Um, I'm going to answer one of the questions in the chat. So we're opening up our donation process again on September 1st. So we're, we're really excited to get some, our new artwork in, new objects and new artwork back into the collection. <laughs> our staff is back in the offices. Um, and so we're ready. We're ready to, to get new stuff. Good deal. Yeah. Excellent. Anybody, anybody else have any more questions or comments? Go ahead, John. Unmute. You. Um, what What is the name of the artist that did the um, that uh, last frame painting that you showed? The last one that you showed. The, um, um, Lovell, the flag uh, raising on Iwo Jima. No, the um, the 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 last frame on the camera. Yes, that maybe the second to last one. Oh, I think his I, I think his name was Lance Corporal Rivers. I'd have to. That, that oh, was the, the artist. Artist is Carpenter, Mr. Carpenter. Okay. Yeah. Um, and he happened to um, uh, do the painting. The family agreed that um, they would offer it to us um, as a donation. He happened to be in Quantico and called me um, and asked if I'd like to see the painting. Um, I immediately um, liked the painting and thought it would be great for the collection. Um, and then the more he told me about it, um, the more it just seemed that it had found the right place for it to be. Yeah, very, very, very powerful piece. Thank you. Oh. All right.
right, so um, I guess we're ready to move on to the next uh, portion. Thank you, um, Joan and Alexis. This was wonderful and it's very good information for us. Thank you. It's great to be here. Thank you very much, everybody. It's been great.